Bora TV. The world is thinking. So the last thing is the Gulf of Mexico and the oil spill, because, because you know, this is this great catharsis in our country. And um, it's great looking at these pictures of the Delta, because it's, look at how ridiculous a place to live that is. And yet there are all these people who live here, including what used to be the richest city in the South. There's the oil spill, of course. There's the grisly stuff we all care about. Um, but what I want to end with is just to say that, that you can't really understand this oil spill or put it in perspective unless you know the history of the northern Gulf of Mexico, which is one of the most dis depressing stories in American environmental history. We can start with agriculture. Um, you know, the, the mouth of the Mississippi is the bowl of the toilet of North America. And all of this phosphorus and nitrogen in incredible mind-boggling quantities comes down the river and gets dumped into the Gulf of Mexico right there. Um, and it makes the dead zone. The dead zone is this area. So all that fertilizer comes down like you fertilize your lawn. And so the phytoplankton grow really fast, just the way your grass grows fast, if you put fertilizer on it. There's so much phytoplankton that the zooplankton can't eat them. And so the phytoplankton do something they're not supposed to do. They die of old age. And when they die of old age, they sink to the bottom. And when they sink to the bottom, they rot. And that uses up all the oxygen. And the reason it's called a dead zone is because there's no oxygen on the bottom. Or very little oxygen, so all the fish die, and the shrimp die, and the oysters, if they're there, die. And the fishermen don't like it, and they go and fish someplace else. And um, this is big. It's bigger than New Jersey. I'm from New York, so I like to say it smells like New Jersey. But actually, it doesn't really smell. Um, but what's amazing is, um, so this was all discovered by this great person you ought to get to come talk here, or Island Press should get her to write a book, Nancy Ravelli. And her husband, Gene Turner, did this work where they can show that if you measure at the mouth of the Mississippi, the nitrate concentration in the river in the spring, you can predict with phenomenal accuracy the size of the dead zone every year. So we know what's causing it. Um, we're also dredging, I mean, look at that picture. I mean, where's the land? You know, I mean, as, as if there wasn't enough water, we make more channels. You know what, we do that to, to find oil and gas. We mess it up to find it, and then we mess it up to take it out. And when we're not making these channels for oil and gas, we're making them for barges. And what this does is we, we dig a channel, and then all, lots of open areas open up around it. And you can demonstrate that the, the amount of land loss that occurs in the area is directly proportional to the amount of land that you deliberately destroyed. In other words, Doing this is destroying Louisiana. And then um, we take oil and gas out and water out. And what happens when you make a hole in the ground? It sinks. So you can plot a graph of how much oil, gas, and water we took out over 60 years in the southern Louisiana coast. And you can look at the rate of subsidence. And you can see the rate of subsidence tracks oil and gas extraction. Um, to the point that if you ask the question, what causes subsidence? In other words, what's causing the disappearance of half or a third of Louisiana? There are a lot of natural processes, natural subsidence, tectonic processes, it's a compaction. But a very significant amount of it is due to fluid withdrawal. In fact, that's the biggest number in the table. And what we call surface water management which should be called mismanagement. It's all that dredging and building levees and stuff like that. And then this picture is a horror story. Would you buy a house in New Orleans? Or even Baton Rouge? OK, I'm, I'm not going to go through the details. I'm just going to say that this is what it'll look like in 2100 if sea level rises at the slowest imaginable rate 
if land subsides at the slowest imaginable rate. That's how much land will be left. Now, this genius from Germany named Stefan Ramsdorf has published a series of what I think are the most chilling papers I've read in a long time, demonstrating that everything we're concerned about is happening, happening dramatically faster than predicted by the IGPP. And in particular, what's going up way faster than predicted by all the global climate models is sea level rise. And so Ramsdorf is kicking around a number of something like one and a half to two meters of sea level rise by 2100. And then this will all be gone. That's also assuming there will be no more hurricanes, no more intensification of hurricanes or storms. 